Approximately 66 million years ago, a massive asteroid six to nine miles across slammed into the Gulf of Mexico, changing the world as dinosaurs knew it forever. This was likely the key event that led to the downfall of the dinosaurs, with several other contributing factors mixed in, wiping out around 76% of all species on planet Earth. The catastrophic event, quite literally one of the most terrifying and impactful days in the history of life on our planet, saw the end of the Mesozoic era, marking the end of all species of non-avian dinosaur, large marine reptile, and pterosaur. Over the course of the next few million years, the world would see a slow recovery from the impact of the asteroid, eventually becoming the warm, subtropical world of the Paleocene Epoch, marking the very beginning of the Cenozoic era. This would see the mammals take the reins from the dinosaurs, which shaped the world as we know it today. In our species' short lifetime, we thankfully have not experienced an event as truly cataclysmic as the end Cretaceous extinction. But scientists have been able to unveil a great deal about what it would have been like during and after the impact. Today, we will be stepping into the lives of the very last dinosaurs on our planet to experience a unique point of view of what happened in the final days of the Mesozoic. To the dinosaurs, it was just another day. Across the late Cretaceous world, life was carrying on as it had done for millions of years. Triceratops browsed on low-growing vegetation, occasionally looking up to check for approaching Tyrannosaurus-shaped danger. Groups of Ornithomimus sprinted across the plains like large reptilian ostriches. Pteranodon took to the coastlines in vast numbers to scoop fish up from the waves, while opportunistic mosasaurs attempted to snatch them from the sky. It might sound outlandish and wondrous to us humans, but to these animals, this was the usual, perhaps even mundane. In the distance, however, something was looming. Thousands of miles away, the asteroid that would spell the end of these animals was beginning to enter Earth's atmosphere, on a course straight for the Gulf of Mexico. At this point, it's unlikely that the dinosaurs even noticed the faint glow in the sky, let alone identified it as their doom. As it grew closer, however, this would have changed. Booming and rumbling echoing out of the sky would have sent pterosaurs flying from their clifftop nests, observing the animals of the ground as they panicked and ran for cover. Unfortunately, for the vast majority of dinosaurs and extinct reptiles on our planet, it was not the impact of the asteroid colliding with Earth that killed them, but its slow, torturous aftereffects. The dinosaurs living in and around the area of the impact would have been, so to speak, the lucky ones. Many would have died quick deaths, simply obliterated by the force of a several mile wide flaming rock slamming into the planet at 12 miles per second. But the range of this quick death would only reach so far, and it was more than just the impact that the dinosaurs had to fear that day. The dinosaurs that were not directly struck by the impact were soon engulfed in a colossal flaming wall of heat generated by the asteroid slamming into Earth while still burning up in the atmosphere of our planet. These flames would have scorched forests, turned plains into wastelands, and incinerated any life form in their radius. In the vicinity of the impact, extremely harsh winds would have been whipped up by the collision blasting entire ecosystems away with immense force. And what came next were the waves. Colossal tidal waves created as the asteroid displaced the water of the Gulf of Mexico, sweeped out across North and Central America. These tidal waves were potentially over a mile high in some areas, meaning that the animals in their path did not stand a chance. The impact changed the geology of our planet vastly. 
As sand flew into the air and chunks of rock were blasted out of the sea, ocean sediment mixed with terrestrial sediment, causing a huge mix-up in the fossil record. The initial blast then set in motion a chain of events across the Western Hemisphere. Shock waves, tsunamis, and storms generated by the event in the Gulf of Mexico caused natural disasters all over the Americas, as far away as central Argentina. There are thought to have been mighty earthquakes, which in turn triggered more tsunamis, landslides, and catastrophic weather events. This meant that across North and South America, animals had to contend with what scientists have called spherols, small particles of rock that were dislodged from the Earth when the asteroid struck. High winds, shock waves, and tsunamis would have whipped these particles up into abrasive, turbulent barrages, lacerating unfortunate organisms caught up in them. As the spherols moved, they generated further heat, which caused firestorms across the continents. It has been estimated that as a result of these factors combined, all large terrestrial organisms in North America were killed within just a few hours after the asteroid striking the Gulf of Mexico. For the rest of the world, the problems were just beginning. While animals in some regions would have seen or felt the asteroid hit the planet, many were oblivious and powerless to its forthcoming after-effects. When the asteroid collided with planet Earth, a tremendous quantity, billions of tons in fact, of dust, soot, and ash caused by the actual collision as well as its subsequent fires and natural disasters, were launched into the atmosphere. The evidence is visible in the fossil record. Paleontologists can still see a layer of preserved soot that separates the Cretaceous with the Paleocene to this day. Much of this would have been launched directly upwards, causing a thick layer of dark gray debris to blanket the Earth, preventing sunlight from reaching organisms for over a year. This is known as an impact winter, where a catastrophic event leads to a sustained period of barren conditions that see the world bereft of nutrients, color, life, and normality. Layer by layer, the impact of winter began to affect the ecosystem. This would have been a gradual decline into extinction for many species, and it started right at the very bottom. In the seas, phytoplankton, tiny plants that float through the water, providing the foundation of the oceanic food web, found themselves without sunlight to help photosynthesize. As the seas grew darker, this plankton began to disappear on a colossal scale, which in turn saw the loss of zooplankton that relied upon them for food. With the zooplankton gone, many fish were unable to feed and quickly succumbed to a lack of nutrients in the water. In turn, the large seagoing predators such as mosasaurs, plesiosaurs, and more went hungry. The very same thing happened on the land. Without sunlight, microorganisms and plants could not prosper, leading to a collapse in the greenery across the world. Herbivorous dinosaurs that relied on great forests and plains slowly began to disappear as their food sources vanished. In turn, even the mighty tyrannosaurs, rulers of their respective ecosystems, began to die out once their prey items disappeared. Slowly but surely, ecosystems across the world began to suffocate, and it was all linked to the collision in the Gulf of Mexico. It took hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years, for the planet to fully recover from the impacts of the end Cretaceous extinction event. Despite the horrific conditions experienced the world over in the wake of the disaster, several species were able to hang on to life and recover fully. These were the generalists, animals that are not adapted to one specific niche, but those that can be versatile and live in different environments and conditions. 
Many small animals survived the impact as they did not require large quantities of food to sustain themselves. They could scrape by on carrion, roots, sparse plant matter that was tough enough to survive the blast, and invertebrates. Many of these creatures were also burrowers, meaning that they could not only escape the desperate, hungry jaws of the dinosaurs by taking shelter in the earth, but did not need to spend much time in the volatile environmental conditions of the surface. The same can be said for small birds who could quickly escape danger zones by flying, or fish that were adapted to generalist lifestyles in a wide variety of waters. Carnivorous animals tended to avoid extinction when they did not require large quantities of food and were not picky about the food they ate. A prime example is the crocodiles. These adaptive, resilient hunters have managed to survive multiple mass extinctions by eating a variety of food sources at large intervals. Hundreds of thousands of years following the initial impact of the asteroid, the dust in the Earth's atmosphere began to settle and the sun shone down on the wastelands of Earth once more. This light breathed new life onto the survivors of our planet allowing plants to photosynthesize and diversify once again. Huge subtropical forests began to form as the Earth warmed, which would eventually support new kinds of animal life. Within a little over two million years, large animals had returned to these forests. Pantodonts, strange mammalian herbivores roughly the size of a bear, were some of the first megafaunal creatures to walk in the footsteps of the dinosaurs and would set the scene for the foreseeable future. A walk through one of these ancient forests would have been a naturalist's heaven. Insects fluttered through the air as birds chased after them from the branches. Small, shrew-like mammals hopped and climbed through the undergrowth, while some of the first diverse mammalian carnivores Arboreal, cat-like animals chased after them. Within several million years, the mammals had well and truly taken over. Although they would never attain the colossal sizes of giant theropods or towering sauropods, they walked proudly in the footsteps of their reptilian forebears. There is absolutely no doubt that the day the asteroid struck the Gulf of Mexico, the Earth changed forever. It must have been terrifying for the poor animals trapped in its path, and agonizing for those who would later succumb to its aftereffects. This mass extinction, however, can teach us a lot about the resilience of life and its ability to crawl back from the very brink. If not for the impact of the asteroid at the end of the Cretaceous, we would not have any of the major mammal groups we see in our forests, grasslands, mountains, and oceans today. Even we, Homo sapiens, would not have been able to evolve with many of the world's niches taken up by the reptiles that fell to the impact. While terrifying, it is a majorly important step in our world's natural history.